Hey everybody. So this is Danelle and I'm with Danelle Stitchery. Um, let me, I'll give everybody a few moments to pop in. Let me know as everybody comes in. Hope everybody is doing wonderful today. I'll give everybody a few minutes to get the notifications that I went live. I'm using a different application today to go live, so hoping everybody gets the notification just fine. So today I am doing my live showing how I make my bowl cozies. This is the fabric since Thanksgiving to right around the corner. This is the fabric that I wanted to use today. And so let me know down in the chat on if you are making these with me, if you're following along. Hey, Beverly, how are you? And yes, my birds are being a little restless today because I've already been on Sean with the guy who sews um, live stream this morning. So they've already had a lot of interaction. And they are being a little, a little needy today, but that's okay because they're always needy. They love it when they have their lovins. But today I am making bowl cozies. This is the fabric that I'm going to use. I'm using it for the front and the back. The design that I'm going for is this right here. And I call this my hanging bowl cozies because I do it as like a binding with a little hanger like you would a pot hanger or a pot holder. So I'm doing that design. I don't do a whole lot of quilting. You can. I don't because I figure I'm doing the seam right here on all four sides to give it that bowl shape. Plus, I'm doing the stitching of the quilting up here on the binding. So I figured that should be enough to hold them together. I've not had any complaints thus far. Um, so what I use is I use, I don't know if everybody checked the description below, but what I use is the, I use two 10 inch squares of fabric that I want to choose. And I'm doing the same two fabrics for this one. And then I like to use fusible fleece and I do cut a nine and a half inch square. So that way I got a little bit of an overhang of the actual fabric on each side. So no chances of getting any on my iron or anything. And this here is the fusible fleece that I use. It's a Pelon 987 fusible fleece. I buy it in the bulk off of Amazon, which is seven yards by 22 inches off of Amazon for a good deal. Because I use it a lot for like my bowl cozies, my pot holders, um, my keychains that I make. I think that's about it, but I use it a lot. So I keep that in stock. So after you cut out your nine and a half inch square of the fusible fleece and the 10 inch square of your fabric, you're going to fuse those onto each other. Me too, because I like the fact that when it's not being used, you can use it for a decoration. And it eliminates taking up extra counter or cabinet space. So what I do to start off after I fuse my fleece on here, I fold this in half and forgot my clips one second. Okay, so I keep two clips aside to my little quilting clips. And then I also use for my rulers, I just use my so Ultra Grid, grid by Quilt Cut. You can use any ruler you want. This is just my favorite. It's the two and a half by nine and a half. And then I just use a pencil because I'm marking on the fleece side, so no one's gonna see my marks. 
and it's just pencil. I don't have to worry about a bleeding through or anything like that. So what I do is I fold this over in half where the top is touching the bottom and I clip it. If anybody has any questions or anything, please feel free to put it into the chat. So I clip it at both ends. Oops, sorry, try and get used to where the camera's at. Got a little bit of a different setup today. And then I just try and crunch it down to get it nice and flat as I can with my hands. And then from there, I'm gonna measure, on my ruler, I'm gonna measure from the edge over here. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna go, in two inches and up one inch. I'm going to do that. So we go over towards the center two inches and make a mark right there on the edge of the fabric. And then up one inch, make a mark on the fabric. Just like this. So we're going to go over two inches and up one inch. And then we're going to connect those two dots, those two marks. And we're going to do that on both ends. So let me go ahead and connect those two spots. And this gives it that bowl shape. I actually like doing 10 inch squares. You can go smaller, you can go larger. All depends on how you like it to fit your bowl. I like to make mine a little bit on the larger side. Seems like a lot of people that buy mine from me at my craft shows or at or online on my Etsy store likes the larger sizes. So we got that now on both corner bottom corners uh, where the folded fabric is. And we're gonna sew on that line. And we're going to do this for both of the tenant squares. So Beverly, since you're on here quite a bit and everything with me, how do you like the new camera angle? And anyone else that's in here watching as well, I would like to get some input and everything on how you like the new camera angle. I am working on getting this fixed up for two cameras, one that looks directly at me and one that John will look more down at my sewing machine itself. So that way there, when I'm doing tutorials like this, you can see what I'm doing. And of course, I forgot my good fabric scissors over there, so I'm just gonna use my little clips. You can either trim this off about a quarter of an inch away, or you can leave it on. I'm just going to leave it on today and see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of my other one now. That way that I got both of mine done on this end before we move on to the next step. Hey, Patty G. Yeah, I like it too because it adds a little extra purpose for it. Gives it the little extra purpose of being a wall hanging or decoration as well as easy storage, doesn't take a bitch room. Hi, Sewing sh Sensations with Shady Susan. Oh my gosh, that is a tongue twister, lady. How are you doing? So I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but I measure over from the edge of my fabric, going towards the center, two inches. Just like this right here. So I measured over two inches and then I measured up one inch and then I'm gonna connect those two lines just like I did here on this first one. And then that's my sew line of where I sew at. So what is everybody up to today? What are your fun creations that you're working on or or are you just hanging out and listening? Or are you working on household chores, which is what I'll be doing after my stream today. Yay. Kitchen needs some, my kitchen needs some cleaning because I was busy shopping yesterday after work. Didn't get any cleaning done in there. And then I decided to do a little bit of sewing because I was like, ah, I'm off on the weekend. 
Always losing my stuff. Ah, so no sewing today, Beverly? Okay, so we have the first set of seams done up on both of my pieces. We got them both on this end and we have them both over here on this end. Like I said, I'm gonna leave my little extra on there. You can take it off if you want. Ooh, I, oh my gosh, Patty, I haven't seen your last year stock that you've done. Those are absolutely gorgeous. You've done an amazing job. I cannot wait to see what you do for this year. Okay, so we have the little part done here at the bottom where we can sewn. So we're going to open this up and it creates this whole like little pocket if increase in here. So now we're going to fold it like this for the two corners up here where the two corners are. And then that way there are the two seams that we just made are, at the, are in the center now. We're going to do this to both pieces. And then we're going to create so we're gonna lay this nice and flat, which it'll be a little bit of a curved nice and flat. Let's see if I can get, yep, there we go. Okay, so camera's over right here. Sorry, still trying to get used to this. So, okay, so right here we have the seams on both sides, front and back uh, that we just did. Now we're gonna do the same down here on the fold, this folded edge on both ends. And we're gonna do that to both pieces. We're going to go up one inch and over two inches, draw a line to match those two marks, and then that's going to be our sew line. And that's going to give our bowl cozy the bowl shape. So let me get those drawn on and sewn on. So, what is everybody? favorite or does everybody have a tradition around this time of the year that they love doing with their family or friends my husband my son and myself we love watching scary movies up until almost thanksgiving and then we love like starting to watch like a lot of the holiday movies. Um, for Christmas Eve, we always do biscuit pizzas. Been a tradition in my house ever since the boys were little. So we take a can of biscuits and we flatten it out and make little biscuit pizzas out of it. I love food too. I didn't get to be this chunky without my love of food. Quasar says he loves food as well. He especially loves it when his mommy and daddy get some treats. <laughs> it's a good word. So, I got the first one done. We got all four of these scenes done up, which gives us the bowl formation. And so now I'm going to move to the second piece and get that second set of seams done up. So does anybody else have any big traditions that they like to do for the holidays? Whether it be something small, something big. And anybody that is watching the replay, 
Thank you so much for watching. And so for everyone, please feel free to subscribe, share, like, hit the thumbs up for my channel. And because as soon as we get to 200 new subscribers, then I will be doing another giveaway. For every 100 subscribers I get, I will do a giveaway on my channel of items that I make. And they are items that cannot be bought on my Etsy store or anything like that. Yeah, that's my favorite part, Beverly. Like of all the traditions in the world, my favorite part is just being with friends and family and everybody being good. And when I say good, I mean like good in health, everybody together. Family is my most favorite thing in the world. We may not always get along, but we work our differences out and figure it out. Okay, so now we have two pieces that are super cute. What I'd like to do is I'd like to turn one inside out and one right side in. And I can put them together like this, this one inside of the other. And when I am matching, getting ready to do the binding on this, or clipping it for the binding, I do one seam one way, one seam the other way, just like you would with anything else that you're quilting or making up and all where you got two seams that are touching. That way there you can clip. And I always clip right in the dead center where my seams are first, and then I come back around and clip the rest. So all in all, I use like eight clips whenever I'm doing one of these. More clips. I should have just brought the whole bag over here with me, but I didn't do that. Once I get this clipped up, I will show you guys what I did. That's actually probably the first time I'm actually leaving the little extra pieces on there and say I take them off. I'm like, you know, why am I going to cut them off? I don't do anything with them besides throw them away because they're tiny. When I could just leave them on and it gives a little extra support for that seam. Oh, I am so jelly. Patty, that is, that is amazing. I am super jealous. Oh my God, I love the Fabric Addiction store on there. I was so bummed out because I just got paid and I did not have the extra money to buy a whole lot of fabric this paycheck. And I'm such a, a fabric hoarder. I, or, Fabric Rescuer. There we go. Okay, so I got all of my pieces, all of my sides clipped. I clip first all four centers where my seams are, so that way they're all my seams are matching. And then I put a clip on each one of the ends just to help keep my points matched up. So I got that ready to go. Easy peasy, then mince squeezy. Next, I like to use the um, the bias binding. I make my own. I just buy a fat quarter. I can get about three um, of these done up out of one fat quarter. So I just take it. I cut it into two inch strips. And then I use my bias tape maker. Or you can do it the traditional way of just folding in half. Ironing it and then folding the other each side into the center and then fold it and then there's your bias tape. 
But to do, I'll do a tutorial, or you guys could also look up a bunch of different tutorials. Probably be better just to look up a bunch of different tutorials. But if you guys want, I can do tutorials. Just let me know in the comments of how I make my bias binding. Make it different each time, but overall, it all works the same. So, like with anything that we're quilting, I usually start off from mine. Since I'm putting the loop on here, I start mine right up here at the corner. So what I do is I come up here and I just put it right at the edge. If I go over even a little, that's fine too, because that way there it just guarantees that that's going that that corner is going to be covered. And I put my clip back on there a little ways down. So that way there holds my clip on there while I get this started. Now, I forgot to try and put in a matching. Um, I forgot to put in a matching thread. So this one's going to go in as a white thread. But that's okay because it'll still look good. There's white in the fabric. So it is what it is. So we're going to sew this. We're going to go all the way down to the corner. To this center right here. And the reason why I like to use the um, bias binding is because the fact that once we get down here, we're going to sew right down to the center of where that seam is right there. We're going to sew right where our needle lands, right dead in that seam. And then we're going to pivot a little and we're going to turn it up so that way there forms a V. Let me grab my other one so I can show you guys better. Go. So, that way there it forms like the V shape right in here. So, which is why I use the bias binding on this. And I'll get I'm gonna record this on a whole tutorial of a pre-recorded thing before I put it out of a better close-up of actual me doing this on the machine. So that way there, I just got to get a better stand for it first. In the meantime, at least you guys got this. Make sure to backstitch. I should have put matching thread in, but I didn't rewind it all in for it or anything like that. So it is what it is. Oh, well. Worst case scenario, I'll keep this one for myself. So I'm just matching up, making sure everything looks good. And when I'm doing my binding, I did my binding for my quilt the exact same way. Let me take this off here and show you because I don't sew the front on and then the back or vice versa. I don't hand stitch it or anything like that. I actually do my binding both sides at the same time. So see? So what I do is get this extra piece over here out of my way. So what I do is I turn, because let me turn it around this way so you can see. So on, if I open up the first main fold, we have both of the sides that are folded over. The bottom section here, I lay up against this here. That way there, we still see the top folded section over here. And then I just flip this over and I go a little at a time and I hold it. And that way there, they're both equally the same amount on both sides. And I sew down the seam and then I readjust and continue. I do about this length and I do my quilts the exact same way. I don't do one side and then do fold it over and do the other side, anything like that. A lot of quilters do it that way. Most quilters do it that way. This is how I like to do mine. I've never had a problem with it. If I do happen to miss a spot on the back where it might shift a little, I just go back and fix it. Not that big of a deal. It's usually not that often that it messes up on me. Now, since I said that, it will. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do.
continue going around. Or it's better if you put the foot down. And make sure I lock in my stitch. Hardest part is keeping everything nice and flat whenever you got all these curves and everything wants to move and all, but it's all about taking your time. When I count on my corners, I cut the thread so that way there. I sew right to the edge of my fabric. See if I can get a good image there. So right, so right to the edge of the fabric. And then I turn double stitch, a uh, lock stitch it. Hey, Sean, how are you doing? Just working on the binding that I do on my full cozies. So my final stitch on this side is right here at the corner, right at the tip of the fabric. So what I do is I put my thumb in here inside the binding thing, like a little sleeve I made. I turn, force it into a arrow shape up here for the center where this crease right here lays right up against this right here. That way there I know it's right dead center. And then I fold the two sides over, which gives me my miter corner. And occasionally I do have to readjust it a little just to make sure I got my exact miter corner, but it gives me an adorable little miter corner. And then I start like right before the fold. Get my big old fingers out of the way so you can see. So I'll start like right over here, right before the fold, about an eighth of an inch in, and then I'll continue sewing down until I get to the next corner. Thank you. I love doing it this way, and I do my quilts the same way. It takes less time for binding, and takes a little extra time of preparing the binding, but I like it, it works for me, and it's less stress, especially when it runs right towards the end of a project, and I just want the project done, because I want to see the completed piece. Hey, Ronnie, I'm glad I was able to show you a little something new. I actually found this design, this method of binding on, um, Modern quilt or something like that. I'll have to look it up again. I'll post a I'll copy a link of it into my description of the video. So that way there, if you guys would like to try it, then you can. And they have a really good tutorial on how they do it step by step. It was actually the woman's husband, which is a partnership in their thing and their channel. He did, gave a tutorial actually of how to do the, the binding like this, and I tried it once and fell in love. And I've been doing my binding this way ever since I seen their tutorial, because I'm like I I hated the other way of binding. I just and I wanted I had a certain project I was working on at the time. I don't know what it was now where I wanted to see about putting binding on both sides at the same time. So that way there, I, I didn't waste an entire day just to bind one quilt. And yes, you're okay, we're gonna get some phrase strips here. And that's because I use pre-cuts for my full cozies most of the time, but that's okay. So once again, I'm at my end. I'm going to put my thumb inside the little group here that I made, right up against the seam. So that way there are forces it open and I am able to create like that little arrow where 
the edges of my fabric are up against the crease here to create my modern corner. I double check both sides, make sure my corner looks good. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a clip and I'll clip right back here to help hold this down while I work on getting this all fixed up nice and neatly if I need to readjust anything. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it all depends. Okay, so I'll put that through. And this is row three already. So we're almost to the end and then we can be able to do our loop. And Sean, thank you so much for having me on your channel today. That was a lot of fun. And I cannot believe I got an entire month of um an entire month of Vortex description done on the channel this morning. Okay, so now I'm in the center of this bowl cozy. And I actually chose this one here because I have a matching call holder set for this. So the way there I can list it up on my store if people want to buy it or keep it for myself because it's cute no matter what. Going around the groove in the center, right where the seam is at, that's probably the most trivial portion with this, doing the binding part and everything. Because you got to readjust the fabric, make sure everything still lines up. Other than that, everything is like super easy peasy. I love it to death. Oh, just folding my net, my last mitered corner because obviously the end that has the loop won't have the mitered corner. And I clipped it about an inch or two back so that way right there I can get it underneath the needle and get going on it with no problems. All oh, that holds the fabric in place for me. And I backstitch on every one of my miter corners just to make sure everything's nice and held down, nice and firmly. Nothing's going to break loose on me. And once I get down here to this corner, I will show you guys how to do the last half. And I like to backstitch in my corners just, just because that is where my seam is. Trim up all my loose threads as I go. Okay, so since I left a little extra, let me bring you guys over here so I can show you. I'm gonna do this slowly so that way there I don't hopefully get anyone to the stomach. So by here, since I start when I started off, I left a little edge draw on there. So what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm gonna so I'm gonna cut this just to trim off the little extra there so everything lays nice and flat. And please excuse my messy room. It's a complete disaster in here. I got to do some cleaning later because it's been a crazy week and I just didn't do any cleaning in here this week. Had too many projects going all at one time. Oh, 
Okay, so for the final step to create our loop, let me show you what I just done. Okay, so we have our bowl cozy. So to make it a hanging bowl cozy, what I did is whenever I came back around on my last side, I went all the way up over to the edge there. So the end of my seam is right there at the edge of the fabric, at the outside of this portion of the fabric. So what I usually do is I like, I like about five inches. I think five inches is pretty good for a hoop or for the little loop. So I just take my little two and a half by nine and a half measure, measuring ruler. I measure out from the edge of this fabric right here. Put the ruler right up against it. Measure out five inches, about five, five and a half. And that's where I cut the fabric. That's where I cut the binding at. So once I do that, let's see. I did not keep track of my, of my chats here. Yeah, a little cozy for gifts for coworkers this year. Yeah, Ronnie, that would be a great idea. For family members, I'm actually trying just started making quilted jackets. So I'm going to make each one of them a quilted jacket of one of designs that they would love. And then plus that way there gives me some practice and something different for family members. But uh so now I got about five and a half inches here, between five, five and a half. From the edge of the outside of this binding to the tip where I cut it. So I'm gonna put this back underneath the sewing machine. I'm gonna start sewing, pick up right where I left off on my seam. I'm gonna sew all the way down to the end here. And that's gonna cl close up this binding. And then once I get that done, I'm gonna take it from, so what I'll do is, so this is the front part, the part that you're looking down in where the bowl goes. What I do is I take it inward and I take it back behind. Let's see. I'm trying to do this on camera, so I take it back behind. And then I'll do like a box stitch. So I'll come back to my seam. I'll start down here. I'll do a bot stitch to go down, around, and then maybe even an X in the center. That way there, it gets a nice little finish. Nothing's going to break loose. It'll hang from wherever it, people want it to. And that is, let's see, here we go. And that is my seam right there from the previous one I done, uh, my Snoopy one. So I did a box there. So let me do that up real quick. I don't bother doing a locking stitch at the end of the strip because of the fact that it's going to get locked in whenever I sew it into the hoop. So I got this all closed in right now. Thank you, Ronnie. So now I'm going to bring this back and I'll tuck it back to the back of the bowl cozy. You can make it a finishing edge if you want. However you want to do it. This is just how I do it. I don't, I always figure, okay, I get, I sew it so close and a couple of times. So that way there, I don't got to worry about my edges spraying. So now I fold it so that way there, the back of it is up. Thank you, Beverly. So see here.
And each intersection of this, I backstitch, give a little extra security to it, just to make sure that we don't have anything that's flipped around or moved around on us. And there's nothing flips loose. Because like I said, I do sell my stuff that I make. If I don't keep it for myself, I sell it or I gift it. Or like some of my items, I give away and I give, I do giveaways on here now. So for every hundred people I get as subscribers on here, I'm doing a giveaway. We just had one like last week, I think it was. So we should be having one healthy. Hopefully not too much longer once I get up to 200 subscribers and Sean helped out quite a bit today. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so now I'm right on the edge of my cut area there. I do a little extra sewing there to hold down, make sure nothing frays or anything like that. And normally I do my bowl cozies in batches. So this is actually the first time I'm doing one all by itself. But overall, through a tutorial, 41 minutes long, we have a hanging bowl cozy that is super cute, adorable fabric of like the little harvest fruits and vegetables that is ready to go for anybody's little bowl of soup, ice cream, pie with pumpkin or apple pie with vanilla ice cream yum yum so anybody have any questions for me hey kathy klein glad you made it hi christine and i hate to ask this christine but what is lqs my brain is a little like today Thank you, Beverly. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah, I went to Joanne Fabrics yesterday. Got some fabric that for, to make my son a um, drawstring bag. So that for his uh, welding helmet for out in the garage. Oh, you're very welcome. Make sure to thank Sean because he's the one that gave me the idea to show everybody how I made my hanging bowl cozies. I mean, making a bunch more of them today. Oh, and out of one fat quarter, these are out of one fat quarter of solid fabric that I made bias binding out of. This is what I have left after doing like three or four bowl cozies. So, in this, I could actually turn, and I mean, this is not bad at, at all. It's two inch strips, and I can easily use that for other scrappy stuff. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Not a problem at all, Kathy. Feel free to watch the replay as well as like and share it. Um, I will also be doing a recorded video where it's more close up and everything where you can see exactly what I'm doing under the sewing machine and all, as well as me cutting everything and all from start to finish. Um, so I'm gonna do a recorded video of that so that way there you can Fast forward to whatever you need and everything and all. Um, I'll probably do that this week or maybe later on today, depending upon how I feel later on today on, on being on camera more. Um, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I'm actually getting ready to head over to their channel because I know they have a sit star live stream going today that started the same time as mine did. So thank you so much. I. Really appreciate you letting me know that. That's awesome. I have to make sure I thank Laura Lynn. You're welcome, Patty G. Laura Lynn is such a sweet lady. 
And she's been through so much, and I'm so happy that she's doing so much better. But if no one has any questions, I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful weekend and a beautiful week. Stay warm wherever you are, because I know here in Michigan, it is getting chilly. That's a rough weather on Halloween and everything. Stinking snow all through her trading. But anyway, everybody have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and be nice to everybody. Never know when a smile might brighten somebody's day. Thank you. Bye.